Hello, <clears throat> my dear friends. Welcome to my spiritual science series. Uh, today is Sunday of February, uh, excuse me, February 27, 2022. And uh, the theme today is uh, turning toward the character of God. Turning toward the character of God. Text. Text Psalm 86, 15, verse 15. So, here, it is remarkable, however, that the psalmist thoughts don't linger on his enemies. So, the beginning of this theme, turning to the character of God, meaning that the psalmist did not put in his mind at this point concerning issue of his enemies his heart turned again to the lord the character of his god so sometime when you face difficult situation and you need god's help to deal with your en enemy when you get to that point you put the enemy aside and then turn to god to whom you trust and obey and know that he would never fail you. So this is what the psalmist did. He said, but you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abundant in steadfast love and faithfulness slow to anger because sometimes when the enemy push you so hard the first thing that come in your spirit is anger and rage and to get them down immediately but Asami is quoting the word of Yahweh Yahweh who his promise is protection and his love and then when Moses had asked Yahweh please show me your glory O oh Lord, in Exodus chapter 23, 18, Moses asked God at that point for God to show him, Moses, his glory. But God took Moses in the cliff of the rock to protect him from the full glory of his face. Then he revealed himself, his glory, with these words. So what the psalmist saying here today, when God asked Moses, to show him his glory. At that time, Moses has failed God in certain way, and he was at a race, and he was perplexed and weary. So when he asked God to show his glory, God hit him underneath a rock so that his enemy wouldn't see him. And then God revealed himself through his glory. And listen to what the word said. The Lord, the Lord, a good, merciful, and gracious, gracious, slow to anger, again, and abundant in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Exodus chapter 34, 6 to 7. So you see, this is who God is. He forgave us of our iniquity because Moses knew that he had failed God just at the same as the psalmist David. That's why he 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 he, he he's uh, uh, lamenting so dearly to his God. And then God's amazing character is his glory. So the character of God here today is God's glory. So let, let as I go to the conclusion of this topic, first of all, keep in your mind, God's amazing character is his glory. So your character as a preacher, as a person of God, who, who believe in God, your character is your glory. What is glory? The way how you reach out to your community, your family, your friends, those who in need, 
Those who are less privileged than you. That's how you show your glory. Like I would like to mention a uh, uh, Stanton Waterspoon. That guy put uh, 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 established a cutting edge radio station in post-war Liberia. And not only wherever he getting from that station, wherever he racing, he show his glory by helping helpless people to change their life. That was Stanton Waterspoon of Liberia. There is a, 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 a social media a, a, a media executive called Stanton Waters for he's the one I'm talking about. And so I describe him what it means to show your glory. And that is the character of God. When you say you know God and you love God, you got to show yourself through the character of God, which is God's own glory. So as I conclude, some people imagine the angry God of the Old Testament is vastly different from the loving father of the New Testament. So what it's saying here is that what the psalmist is explaining here and, and Dr. Wilson and try to uh, uh, create a kind of exegetical part of this Psalm 86 uh, 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 verse 15. He's saying that sometimes people think about the angry God in the days of the old. During the days of Moses, Abraham, there was the day that God use his anger to deal with his own people. But then sometimes people think, say, when the coming in of Jesus, they look at Jesus at the same hand with God. No, Jesus had all the power, but he never used it against his enemies. But rather he blessed them and forgave them. That's what Jesus did. Then, above all, God is known for his mercy to his children. And let's look at these words in Psalm 86, 15. So we got one, two, three, four, five different words and, 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 and phrases in Psalm 15. Let us see how we can unpack them. The first one is merciful. Merciful refers to, to God's compassion, the Father's deep love for his children. Then gracious. Gracious, this fact, a heartfelt response by someone who has something to give to one who has a need. So you see, when you're gracious, like the Stanton Waters one that I just mentioned, he gave into people who in need to rape victim, someone who was fighting social injustice and burning himself, he changed his life. That's what the psalm is talking about here, to be gracious. The New Testament word for grace is similar. God's favor means gracious, means God's favor. Unmerited, undeserved. That is grace. Something that we don't merit and we don't deserve. That's grace. It's just there to help us to find our path to God. Then it says, slow to anger. Mm, this is familiar. Slow to anger. As I mentioned, some imagine that God of the Old Testament, like I said first be above, to be angry God. But when you consider the history of Israel, Yahweh showed tremendous restraint when dealing with his wayward people. He doesn't fly off the handle and lose his temper, but he does discipline his children when the need come. We're not saying that God was only angry in the, in the, in the olden days, but he, he knew how to deal with the children of Israel because he knew that they were traumatized after so many years in Egypt and you know, honor slavery, being subjected to, 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 to mental torture. God knew the situation, so he used his anger wisely, and he knew what time to use his anger on his children. That's what the psalm is saying here today, and Dr. Wilson is trying to make us to understand that God got his anger, but he's slow to anger. Then we have what they call steadfast love. God's steadfast love. God's steadfast love. We consider in verse 13 above 
verse 13 of, of Psalm 86, above in some detail. It is the firm, stable covenant love that continues even though we may feel him. So you see, steadfast love being is a love that God will continue giving us with all our sinful nature. We sin against him. We do all kind of evil things to other people that they don't merit. But yet and still, God, steadfast love show up in the midst of our misbehavior, in the midst of our sinful attitude. And then, his grace kick in when he decides to punish us. Then finally we have the word faithfulness. Faithfulness. Faithfulness carries the idea of firmness. Faithfulness to be firm. I got faith in God and to be firm in that faith that you believe in God. That what I call firmness. Certainty. To be certain. Hence rock solid truth and trustworthiness. So when you fit for, you got to be rock solid. You got to be strong. You got to mean it from your heart. Connecting with God. You got to be trustworthy. Trustworthiness with me, you have to be trustworthy. Worthy of trust. But if you break that trust on your own, you got to rebuild it through your attitude and your action so that people will say, yes, once he was like this, now today, he is this person. So you find that in 2 Timothy 2, verse 13. Finally, compare Yahweh to the dumb idol of the Palestine or the capricious, cap, capricious God and goddess of Greek methodology. And you begin to understand how Blessed we are. Our God is solid. He is loving. He is holy. And he would never let go of us. Praise the Lord today. So when they talk about great methods, they're talking about myth. People who believe in out of worship. Who believe in the spirit that will depend on to give them power. So people had to go through that. But yeah, us who got this God that is so free. We don't need to go pay any money. We don't need to buy any incense. We don't need to bring cow. We don't need to kill human beings. We don't need to sacrifice anything. Because Jesus already did that for us. Because of the first love that God showed us. By sending his son to die for us. So. We are blessed as Christians. To have God. Yahweh. To have Jesus on our side. As I conclude today, I just want to thank you for listening and keep tuning in. Take your time. Go to, I'm going to post it. That every recording I do, I post it so that if you can't understand my English, you will go and read and understand what I say. Okay? So I'm convincing myself. I'm not just speaking. Because not everybody going to understand the way how we speak English. Your absent, the way he do a presentation. But if you can read or write, you should be able to read and understand. Praise the Lord today. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen and amen. God bless.